garden seating isn't just about furniture. It Garden seating goes right to the heart of our garden and it makes a big difference to how, God, how good your garden looks. I've got 30 great ideas here and some of them you'll be able to do with the garden furniture you already have. So stay tuned. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog with tips, ideas and inspiration from real gardens for your garden. Now, garden seating can be a focal point in your garden. It can be almost a piece of sculpture. It can be a piece of art. It can provide a punctuation point in a big bed. If there's just lots and lots of flowers and greenery and it just all looks a bit muddled, actually a bench put in the middle or at the side can make a big difference. Garden seating area can be a place to create privacy in your garden. Or, of course, it can be a place where you entertain family and friends. You don't always have to spend a lot of money to get gorgeous garden furniture and you can buy your garden furniture second hand. We actually bought four garden chairs which we love from a depot vent in the south of France. That's a second hand warehouse. But of course we put them on the top of the car and drove back up to England and that will have cost us quite a lot in petrol because of course the chairs will have pressured against the wind driving up the motorways. My mother bought lots of garden chairs from auctions in the 1970s and I still have some of them but every now and then we need to repair them or indeed to re replace them. So there's always, even with second-hand furniture, you've always got some costs. One friend of mine, the garden writer Francine Raymond, has a theme for her garden which is yellow and grey and she gets furniture and pots and everything from all over, from second-hand places but also from chain stores and she paints everything either yellow or grey because her garden roof is grey slate and her garden bricks are yellow brick and it really does look very stylish. Another friend of mine, Venka, is Norwegian and she has a really lovely Scandinavian look to her garden and she uses something called wet and forget on her garden furniture and it gives it a sort of faded bleached Nordic look. It's actually a cleaner rather than a paint. And if you're thinking of colours to paint, think about your planting. I simply love these benches from Doddington Place Gardens where the pale blue echoes the, the hydrangeas behind. I think it looks so pretty. And even if you have really quite a standard garden bench, paint can turn it into something quite different, like this stripy, candy-striped garden bench here in one of the Whitstable Open Gardens. It's a lovely red and orange and it completely matches the planting in front of it. I just simply love uh, Sussex Prairie Gardens in Sussex, which is a garden that has benches all over and wonderful prairie planting. And it, it really does match the planting to the benches very nicely. You can also build in garden seating. And uh, my friend garden designer Charlotte Rowe has a very small courtyard garden, but she can actually have really a dozen or so people out there for a party very comfortably because the edge of her beds is actually also a seat. It's a sort of built-in concrete broad edge to her raised beds. It looks very stylish. When there's no one in the garden, it looks just like raised beds, but when we're all in there, we can all sit on the, on the edges and really enjoy ourselves very comfortably. Another thing you can do is to think about the architecture of your house and what sort of garden furniture would suit that. The Salutation is a Lutyens building and it has Lutyens benches in the garden and of course not many of us are going to be that privileged. But even so, Lutyens benches look gorgeous in any garden and Lutyens himself was designing around the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. Perhaps one of the most important things about garden furniture is using it as a focal point. Now if you have a great big garden of course then a bench in the distance down a long avenue of trees is absolutely beautiful but most of us don't have that sort of garden. Even so, even if you've got a very small courtyard garden like my friend Amanda, remember that a bench can be an ideal focal point. And in her case, hers is also quite sculptural and indeed it's purple because she can see it in the winter. She has a glass wall to her house and so she sees this bench year in, year out. If your garden's broken up into areas, then benches and seating areas make a great focal point. So it's really worth thinking about having several around the garden. My friend Lucy, who lives at Pheasant Farm, which is open for the NGS by appointment, has a circular lawn and she has a lovely bench just being a focal point for that. And also another one just providing punctuation in front of a bed of flowers. I have a 
stone bench in front of a bed of flowers and I just think it makes a little bit of difference just to have that tiny bit of stone there uh, rather than simply just having the wonderful flowers and foliage of a bed. Another sculptural bench is this one. It's lovely curved and beautiful and metallic and it's tucked away in a private corner of a private garden. Now you could very happily perch on this and have a drink or you could just look at it because it looks gorgeous. So what about benches for storage? Well, of course, you could have a built-in bench for storage. It would look very smart like this with AZ Landscapes, which I saw at BBC Gardeners World Live. Or you can just stuff things under the bench and arrange them neatly. And actually, even that looks very good. And I particularly love garden designer Charlotte Rowe's log storage underneath her bench. There are some other great idea for benches and seating. I really rather like this metal cage with stones in it. I first saw something like this holding up the seafront at Sea Salter, uh, but it actually looks rather stunning and it was in a garden in Hampton Court. Then I just adore these quirky horse benches from the roof garden of the Ham House Hotel in London. My brother Hugo and his wife Anna made a decking out of railway sleepers for their courtyard garden and they had a little bit left over so they made this bench and it's a lovely focal point. And you can have mismatched chairs. All these are vintage chairs but they are all they all have some pink in them so do think of a theme to pull them together. Or you can have matching chairs like these at the Ascot Garden Show. Even quite minimalist chairs work well. These are very hard wearing plastic chairs that you can scrub down and they don't have arms and they're quite flat so you can really tuck them right under the table. And they're from the garden of Dan Cooper who writes the Frustrated Gardener blog. Or what about a beautiful carved hunk of wood? This one came from Dan Pearson's Chelsea Garden, which won best in show. It's called his Chatsworth Garden at the Chelsea Flower Show several years ago. If you've enjoyed this, do hit like because then I know that you'd like more videos like this. And if you haven't subscribed to the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel, do subscribe. We upload on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration from real gardens to make your garden look gorgeous.